Hi there. I'm Dr. Mary Pat McAndrews, and I'm a clinical neuropsychologist working at the University Health Network in Toronto, which is part of the Toronto Dementia Research Alliance. Why is clinical research important? Well, it's really the only way that we can advance our healthcare sciences. I often tell my trainees that if we're trying to help people with challenging and complex health conditions, we sure hope that we're doing better than we were doing 20 years ago. And clinical research, where we systematically collect and analyze data, is the way to make those changes. One of the main messages, I think, of clinical research over the past few decades is that there are very important differences amongst individuals, even people who have the same diagnosis, and these differences might actually determine their treatment response. Is there a danger to clinical research participation because it's by definition using things that are fairly untested in terms of drugs or new practices. Well, these dangers are in fact mitigated because the research is very systematic. Uh, all of the steps that we follow in clinical research are very rigorous. If possible, if we have an animal model, things are first tested in those animal models. And then in a very small number of individuals to determine safety, then in somewhat larger numbers of people to determine safety and effectiveness across a broad range of individuals. These kinds of clinical trials are very carefully monitored by external monitoring boards. These are people who don't have any interest in the research, only interest in making sure that it's conducted carefully and safely. And any adverse events that occur at all during a trial are immediately recognized and brought forward. So there is a question about whether or not these kinds of clinical trials are really a last resort. It means you've given up every hope of any other therapy that we currently have working. First, I'd really want to remind people that a number of these kinds of clinical trials aren't actually for developing new therapies, but also for developing new screening tools or diagnosis strategies. Um, and some of them are in fact trying to develop things that will help prevent a disease from occurring. So even before there's a serious health problem, and certainly we can't consider that a last resort if you're not experiencing a, a serious health problem at the moment. So even the clinical trials that are for therapies are really rarely considered a last resort, but rather an opportunity to be able to sample a number of techniques or, or strategies or drugs or other kinds of therapies. So for example, um, new drugs uh, are coming along the market every day, and these are, are not really aimed at looking at individuals who have lost all hope of any other kind of therapy. Rather, we're looking to improve things or prevent diseases from happening in the first place. When you're signing a research consent form, it always explicitly tells you that this treatment may not help you today. It might not help you particularly at all, but might help individuals in the future. And that is because by definition, we don't know whether it's going to help. This is what research is. It's unproven. We can't guarantee that you'll be uh, benefit directly. But it is very much understood that there are several different ways that people can benefit from participating. Even, for example, if you're not in the active treatment group in a trial, for example. Some people might find benefits because their health condition is being monitored more carefully and in a different way and more frequently than is the standard of care. That extra attention could bring new issues to light that wouldn't have been discovered otherwise. It can help you and your family members to understand the course of disease and help you to gain more information about your disorder and what might happen in the future. 